Welcome everyone to another episode of The Devoratorium. My name is Darnay Devore. Once again, I'm going to be your host. On today's episode, we'll be discussing Uriah the Hittite, a character profile. Now, we know the story of David and Bathsheba, but very little uh, is, to is told about uh, Uriah the Hittite. Remember, Uriah the Hittite was Bathsheba's first husband. Most of the story focuses on David and Bathsheba. Today, we're going to look closely at the man we know so little about in Uriah the Hittite. So knowing that, knowing that Uriah was always called Uriah the Hittite, where do you think he was from? He was, he was a Hittite. Okay, he was a Hittite. He was not an Israelite. However, uh, many, a lot of people say that God only dealt with Israel back in those days, especially. But uh, Uriah the Hittite, he wasn't of Israel. God dealt with people back then. He dealt with the nation of Israel as a whole, but he also dealt with some individuals back then. And Uriah the Hittite is one of them. So um, not only could, not only did Uriah the Hittite join Israel, he was also able to marry an Israelite woman in Bathsheba. Now, how, how did Uriah the Hittite, how could he have joined Israel? Exodus 12, 48 through 49 tells us that God gave Israel strict commands. If any stranger or, out, or outsider wants to join Israel, they have to be circumcised, circumcise every male in their household and obey my commandments. That's how Uriah the Hittite was able to join Israel. And, and fight for the king and marry an Israelite woman. In Numbers 15, 15, uh, 15, 15 through 16, it talks about uh, these strangers coming in that once they're in, they are equal to an Israelite. There is no secondary class citizen in Israel. If you're an Israelite, you are an Israelite of equal status with anyone else of Israel. Now, um, as I may have mentioned, Uriah the Hittite, was one of David's, he was, he, he served the king's army. How good of a warrior was Uriah the Hittite? Uh, for instance, David, you have the nation of Israel, you have their standing army, which was a mighty army, okay? But above and separate from that army were David's mighty men, his chief warriors, and Uriah the Hittite was one of them. And you'll see that in 2 Samuel 23 and 39. So, Knowing that, knowing that Uriah the Hittite was one of David's greatest warriors, it, it took me back to a movie I saw called Troy. I'm sure many of you saw that, where Brad Pitt was Achilles uh, in, in that film. A buddy of mine, he saw it first. He's a big historical buff. He saw the movie first, and then he said, D, you got to come see this movie. You got to come see this movie. You got to see how they portrayed Achilles. I said, you know... I guess, whatever, because I, I'm, I'm familiar with Achilles. I, I know the legendary story about how his mother dipped him in the river Styx, I think it was, and every part of his body that touched the water uh, was magically protected from harm, except for his heel. She dipped him in by his heel head first and then pulled him out. So the heel was still vul the heel was vulnerable, but the rest of him was invincible. So swords, spears, arrows, nothing could penetrate his skin. I'm familiar with that. He said, no, they did it differently in this movie. They got rid of the magic and he's just so good of a fighter. You can't lay a hand on him. I said, okay, I got to see this. Wow. Well done. I mean, the way he moved, the way he, you know, it was just, it was amazing to see. And that's how I picture um, some of David's mighty men fighting in, in a way that you couldn't touch them on the battlefield. I'm going to do a video about David's mighty men. Uh, so stay tuned for that one. Now, um, so here's the story, David and Bathsheba. I'm just going to do it real brief, real fast. Cause we already know it. Israel was all fighting, um, fighting somewhere. David stayed home. David saw Bathsheba bathing on the rooftop. Um, yeah. How many women do that these days? Right. But Bathsheba's out there bathing on the rooftop. King David sees her, uh, beckons her to come over, and he sleeps with her. She gets pregnant. So David, knowing that this was wrong, even then he knew it was wrong, he, uh, he brought her husband Uriah home from the battle and said, come home, sleep with your wife, basically. 
And what did Uriah say? Uh, Uriah said this, he said in 2 Samuel eleven eleven, Uriah said to David, the ark and Israel and Judah are staying in tents and my commander Joab and my Lord's men are camped in the open country. How could I go to my house to eat and drink and make love to my wife? As surely as you live, I will not do such a thing. Wow. Wow. So, so Uriah the Hittite was so loyal to David, King David, that even when King David called him back from the war, all right, to, 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 to enjoy some time and spend some time with his wife, he didn't. He refused. Now, granted, David only did it to hide the pregnancy. So uh, Bathsheba being pregnant will appear as if it's from Uriah the Hittite, but is actually from King David. So that was just a, a lure to hide what he did wrong, but it didn't work because Uriah the Hittite was so loyal to David. So what did David do? If he, if he decided, if I can't hide, if I can't hide my fornication, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill Uriah the Hittite. So David ordered the death of Uriah the Hittite, his own loyal servant. Can you believe that? I mean, here it is. Uriah the Hittite is serving one of the greatest kings of Israel. You would think that he'd be safe. That's a good, that's a good thing to do. He'd be in good standing, but oh, he was wrong. He was wrong. Let's take a look. Second Samuel eleven fourteen 14 through 15. It reads, in the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it with Uriah. In it, he wrote, put Uriah out in front where the fighting is fiercest, then withdraw from him so he will be struck down and die. Wow. Wow. That is some, oh, wow. Yeah. So we can safely presume that, that Uriah the Hittite loved King David. He loved the nation of Israel, even though he wasn't from Israel. He loved them and he served with dignity, with honor. Who did David love in this moment here? Who did King David love? He loved himself. Nothing about this story benefits Israel or benefits Uriah the Hittite or benefits uh, Bathsheba for that matter. Everything about this story, this particular story, only benefits King David. What a selfish moment in the life of one of the greatest king of Israel. Yeah. Wow. So 2 Samuel 11 verse 17, when the men of the city came out and fought against Joab, some of the men in David's army fell. Moreover, Uriah the Hittite died. I, I'm sure this was a great fight. I'm sure Uriah the Hittite being the great warrior that he was, didn't just lay down and die. I'm sure it was a fight to the finish. And if Uriah got killed, you should probably see the other guys, right? The guys he was fighting. Uh, but what's sad about this is that not only did Ur was Uriah killed, but some of David's own men were killed. That's the depth of David's greed at this point in time in his life. That's the depth of it is that he killed Uriah. He is one of his loyal, most dedicated servants and some of his own men who were out there fighting on his behalf too. Oh man, oh man. So the question comes up, and this question I've asked myself many a time in studying the story, did Bathsheba even love Uriah, her husband? I mean, it sounds like she kind of, she kind of fell in and slept with David pretty quickly, doesn't it? Seems like that, seems that way. But in 2 Samuel 11 verse 26, it reads, when Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead, she mourned for him. So I think she did. I think she, she really loved her, his, his, her, she really loved her husband, Uriah the Hittite. And knowing that he was, that he died really hurt her. Okay. Um, I, I think as far as why she slept with David, well, when the King of Israel summons you to sleep with him, and you know, this King of Israel is also, he's King because God appointed him King. You, you, many folks may, may tend to start thinking, well, if God appointed you king, that means that you must be touched by God. What comes out of your mouth must be of God. So it's easy to think, well, okay, I guess this is part of God's plan is for me to sleep with King David. It wasn't, but this is just what happened. Thanks to David, King David's greed. 
the great warrior Uriah the Hittite. Um, yeah, he lost his life. He lost his life. We see in Uriah the Hittite, a man of quality, a man of honor, loyalty, and unwavering devotion, unwavering devotion, serving the greatest king of Israel. Now, you might think, well, that's not fair. You've got a man in position of power, King David, preying on the, uh, uh, the, the regular dude, the man who's not king, the man who's just, he's a great warrior and he's just a citizen with a wife that he loves. All he wants to do is serve his king, serve his king. And no, that's not fair. And David paid for that sin too. God made sure David and his household paid for that sin. But moreover, this shows a faith in God on our part, because we've got to make, sh we've got to make sure we believe that in with God, we believe that with God, no matter the situation, no matter how unfair it is, God's going to handle it. There may, there may be some situations that we encounter that may seem out of our control. That may not seem very fair to us at all. We may say, God, where are you? Where's your justice? How come I'm being treated this way by someone high on top? I'm serving him and he's killing me. He's, he's hurting me. Where's your justice, God? And then he kills me. Oh, and takes my wife. Yeah. Where's your justice, God? God's got this folks. God has got this. And, and please don't, don't misunderstand. God is not going, even if you don't see the justice that God enacts, he's going to have his justice. We just have to have faith in him. We have to believe in him. Let go and let God. Uriah the Hittite did not know any of the wrongs that had been done to him, that were being done to him. He knew none of that. All he knew was service to his God, the God of Israel, and service to Israel, and service to the King of Israel. That's all he knew, and he died a noble death. He died a noble death in battle. It's David that had to, that had to deal with the consequences of his actions, of his decisions. But with that, I hope you really enjoyed uh, this character profile on Uriah the Hittite. It's a tragic story, but it's a story that shows us a man of courage, honor, dignity, some, someone we should all be. All right. No matter how much bad happens to us, no matter how much bad happened to Uriah the Hittite, he was faithful until his end. That is what we are to be faithful until our end, even if it's not fair. Faithful until the end. God's going to take care of justice for us. Thank you for joining me and stay tuned for the next video.